Iranian cities had defied Iraqi encirclement years before. Yet Iran itself had failed to learn that lesson, and this was the closest they got. Devastating barrages by rocket and artillery, backed by armored assaults, eventually enabled Iraq to break the Iranian stranglehold. With Iran eventually war-weary and on the brink of accepting the United Nations peace call, Iraqi forces once again poured across the border in a last-ditch land grab. Although the war had failed to produce a clear victor, Iraq's supreme leader, Saddam Hussein, contrived to convince his people that they had won despite failing in all his war aims. Saddam had made one clear gain, popular unity. On the banks of the war-torn Shat al-Arab waterway, statues of 99 of Saddam's fallen commanders point accusingly at Iran, glossing over the fact that it was Iraq which opened hostilities. Grandiose monuments like Baghdad's Arch of Swords were erected to celebrate Saddam's triumph over the hated Persians complete with its cascade of helmets from the battlefields. Iraq ended the war with a standing army of awesome size, a million men under arms, five times as many as in 1980. They were armed with the latest rockets, tanks and artillery, but to pay for them, Iraq's economy had been mortgaged to the tune of nearly 100 billion dollars. At the same time, the oil industry, its biggest earner, was devastated. Ten million shells had landed in the Basra oil fields alone, and essential facilities now lay in ruins. Iraq's invasion of Kuwait brought Baghdad several rewards, enlarged oil production and revenue, the cancellation of war debts, and the satisfaction of an ancient territorial claim. Though clearly threatened, the takeover still caught civilians by surprise, and they fled inland as the invaders poured onto Kuwait City's beaches. The vastly outnumbered Kuwaitis offered unexpectedly stiff resistance. But they were seriously outgunned and outnumbered as the Iraqi assault focused on the barracks of Kuwait's elite royal guard, center of resistance beside the ruling emir's palace. That resistance crumbled with the arrival of Iraqi helicopter gunships, but the world reacted with unprecedented solidarity. The United States aircraft carrier Independence spearheaded a huge multinational force, gathered to police the Gulf and support the state next thought to be at risk, Saudi Arabia. Black Hawk and Apache helicopters were poured in, in numbers not seen since the Vietnam War. Armored divisions, American and British, were shipped to the area, backed by troops from the United States and Iraq's rivals for Middle East leadership, Egypt and Syria. Hundreds of thousands of men now prepared for a further Gulf War.